made a dichotomy here. We've taken MP and had its language output be two possible things. One is everything, if M accepts X. And one is 0 to the n, 1 to the n, if M doesn't accept X. And I built it just for that purpose. So now I give this MP to you. And you know how to check whether machines happen to be the same as some kind of finite state machine. You know a way to do that. And I give you MP and you tell me, hey, that's not the same as any finite state machine. And I say, it's not, thanks. Which one of these possibilities can I rule out? Well, if it's not the same as any finite state machine, it's certainly not sigma star. It's got to be this one. And if it's got to be this one, then I know M doesn't accept X. So I got the answer to my original question. And if you tell me it is a finite state machine, I know the only way that could be is if it accepts sigma star, and then I know M does accept X. So it's a sneaky way for me to get the answer to the question whether M accepts X by using you, somebody who knows a way to check whether a machine accepts a regular set or not. That MP can only accept either everything or a particular set that we happen to know is not regular. So when I get an answer as to whether this machine has a language which is regular or not, I know exactly which one of these cases occurred. If we use Michael's reduction just blindly, then these two cases would have been the empty set and a single string, both of which were regular. And then knowing whether the language is regular doesn't help me distinguish between this one or this one. And that would be bad. All right, questions about this? Can you explain that last step about sending it to the, the final step out? Yeah, let me go through it again. I'm trying to figure out a way to decide whether a given machine accepts a given string. I know there's no way to do that, but I'm going to convince you that if there was a way to do that, I'm going to convince you that if there was a way to solve this other problem, then there would be a way for me to decide whether M accepts X. And I'm going through that logic now, this convincing of linking one problem to the other. So the other problem, this problem that we're interested in is somebody gives you a machine and asks you whether it is it the same as some finite state machine. And let's assume that you've got a way to decide that, whether a given machine is the same as some finite state machine. I am now going to describe to you this way of me being able to decide if a given machine accepts X. So somebody gives me a machine, somebody gives me X, and I have to figure out whether the machine accepts X. So here's what I do. I take that machine and I take X, and I construct this new machine called MP. And I'm going to give this machine to you and ask you to tell me whether it's regular or not as far as its language goes. You presumably have some way to do that. If you tell me the answer that it is regular, through my logic, I am going to know that my MP accepts everything, and therefore M accepts X. And if you tell me that it's not regular, through my logic, I'll know that MP accepts this set, and therefore M does not accept X. And that logic is all built into how I created MP. What MP does is look at its input. If it's 0 to the n, 1 to the n, it accepts it. But otherwise, it runs M on X, the original. And if that gets accepted, it accepts everything. Otherwise, it accepts nothing else and just gives me 0 to the n, 1 to the n. Does that yeah. give a bigger picture? Yes, yes. Chris? I think I lost track of how. Determining whether or not a string is accepted by a machine is undecidable. Isn't that just what a universal Turing machine does? <laughs> that, I, that, a universal Turing machine does that, and that's why this problem is recursively enumerable. But a universal Turing machine does not decide that problem. It doesn't make it decidable. It answers the answer yes when the answer is yes. It always does that correctly. But it doesn't give it the answer no. We proved this was undecidable yesterday by diagonalization, specifically showing that there is no way in general to give the answer no correctly. Right, that's the halting problem, right? That's what this is. So now we're taking that halting problem and shifting it and showing that all these other problems are also hard, because solving any of them would solve this halting problem. All right, questions about this? All right, uh, let's do a more, well, a very quick generalization of this to a different problem. What if I asked you, 
uh, maybe I can't figure out whether the Turing machine is the same as a finite state machine. Is it the same as some given context-free language? Fix this reduction so that it works for that problem. This is an easy switch, an easy generalization. Here's what I do. I go over to this MP, and instead of using 0 to the n, 1 to the n, I use something that's specifically a context-free language. Right now, if I use this reduction as I stand, and I give it to you, and you tell me this is a context-free language, you're always going to tell me it's a context-free language. Either I get sigma star or I get 0 to the n, 1 to the n. And if I give it to a context-free language checker, you guys are always going to say yes. I'll learn nothing. I won't be able to distinguish this from this. But if I fix this reduction so that it looks like this, now if I give that MP to a context-free language checker and it tells me yes, I know it's got to be sigma star because that's not context-free. And if it tells me no, then I know it's got to be this, because that's the only non-context-free option. So the question of whether a Turing machine is the same as a context-free language is not possible. Now, that's a really important question. You come up with a new programming language. You wrote it out in a grammar. Somebody writes a program that accepts all the strings generated by that grammar. They write a compiler based on that grammar. You want to know whether they followed your grammar correctly. Did they go ahead and do what you said the grammar was supposed to do? You got a program, you got a grammar, do they do the same thing? Undecidable. Right? So that's a real problem that you'd like to be able to do, and there's a proof that you can't do it. The thing about these proofs is that they're all magic. I can fiddle with this stuff so easily anytime there's a question about a Turing machine language that's something, you know, that I have one example of a language that's not context free. And here's what Rice's theorem says, and then I'll stop this stuff and go on to something a little less abstract. Rice's theorem says this. Let's say you have a general problem like this. You're given an M, and you want to know something about the language of M. Is the language of M something? Quotes. Is it regular? Is it context-free? Is it empty? Is it everything? Rice's theorem says that if you want to ask a question like this, give me all the Turing machines such that their languages have something special about them, as long as that something special is not completely trivial, then this problem is undecidable. And his proof is what we just did. If you can imagine what we just did done more abstractly, he does what we did completely generally for any something in those quotes, where it's regular or context-free or empty or a singleton. He just shows how to do this reduction no matter what it is, as long as one condition is true, that there's at least one Turing machine that has the something true about it and one that doesn't. If they all have something true about them, then that's trivial. And the answer is just always yes or no. But as long as there's one Turing machine that has it and one that doesn't, he can go through this grammar. Excuse me, he can go through this proof. Where does he use that condition that at least one has it and one doesn't? It's to be able to get this. It's to be able to get something that he knows doesn't have that property. What's an example of something that is trivial? Here's something that's trivial. Give me all the Turing machines that I'm going to ask you. Is the language that they generate recursively enumerable? Well, by definition, it's recursively enumerable. Whatever they accept is recursively enumerable. There's a Turing machine that does it. The answer to that's always yes. So his theorem doesn't apply to trivial things. But anything else interesting you want to know, is the language that M generates equal to everything? Undecidable. Equal to nothing? Undecidable. Equal to a regular set? Undecidable. Equal to some context-free language? Undecidable. Anything interesting you want to ask about a Turing machine that relates to its language is undecidable. That's Rice's theorem. Trevor, what about something like, does a Turing machine have an accept state? That's a good question. That particular question doesn't relate to the language of the Turing machine. These are questions that all relate to the language the Turing machine generates, not to the particular Turing machine you're using. So if you want to ask a question about Turing machines that relate just to the machines themselves rather than the languages they generate, 
This says nothing about that kind of stuff. And there may be 